some powers with a horrific colonist track record seek to give human rights lectures. Thanks to the Bolivarian Revolution, we have a society that fully guarantees all human rights and democratic freedoms. The EU continues to bury its head in the sand when it comes to the discriminatory policy of the Baltic countries. The forms of the violence against women and girls through misusing the available technology. How about the overall human rights situation? EU and many other countries in terms of receiving and accepting refugees. There is serious racism and xenophobia. Saudi Arabia's legislation pays special attention to women by prohibiting the use of violence against women and preserving women's dignity within the family and within the workplace. United Nations Watch. Mr. President, we reject the attempt by brutal regimes to use the United Nations to corrupt the language and idea of human rights. Indeed, regular people around the world ask, why does a human rights council include so many non-democracies? Defenders of the system have a ready reply. We need a big tent, they say, so that countries with poor records can engage, learn, and improve. Well, perhaps nations with spotty records, but who actually wish to make progress, can be embraced and given technical cooperation, for example, to train their judges or police. But does the UN have to keep electing the world's worst abusers, dictatorships whose only intent is to win a false badge of international legitimacy? I ask all those here who propagate the big tent theory. Since Vladimir Putin's Russia was elected again and again to this council over a decade, did he learn and improve or on the contrary, did Russia assassinate more journalists, persecute more dissidents and launch more deadly military invasions than ever before? Since China was elected repeatedly to this council, did the communist rulers learn and improve or did they crush more dissidents like Liu Xiaobo than ever before? And I want to know, since Venezuela was elected and re-elected to this council, did Chavez and Maduro learn and improve or did they arrest, persecute and jail more opposition leaders like it's Mayor Antonio Ledesma of Caracas? Order. Point of order from Venezuela. It is unacceptable for this Human Rights Council for an NGO to use offensive language which is not allowed by the regulations of the United Nations. We launch an appeal for proper language to be used when referring to the honor of our political leaders. My country respects freedom of expression, but this cannot be understood as giving permission or carte blanche to demonize any country. And the Human Rights Council is a forum for promoting dialogue and not confrontation. Abuses and offensive language towards my country and towards the political leaders in my country we do not tolerate. President, we hope that you will call this speaker to order. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I would like to call on everyone to adhere to a language that is commensurate with the dignity inherent to the discussion on human rights issues. Tolerance and respect should be the key words of the work of this Council. With this in mind, I give back the floor to the speaker. What is offensive is that Venezuela kills protesters and uses this council as carte blanche to cover up their abuses. Big tent, Mr. President, no big lie. Thank you very no, much. We'd like to continue. International human rights.